We are here. We are at New York Comic Con. I mean, it, virtually. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll I'll start off introductions. I'm Breck, and I play Star Girl. I'm Yvette, and I play Wildcat. Hi, I'm Angelica Washington, and I play Beth Chapel, Doctor Midnight. <laughs> I'm Megan Lacey, and I play Shiv and Cindy Berman. Hey, I'm Cameron Gelman, and I play Rick Tyler and Our Man. And uh, I'm Jeff Johns, and uh, I'm the creator of Stargirl and showrunner of the Stargirl Show, which is amazing, amazing cast. Hey, everybody. <laughs> hey, Jeff. Hey. How are you guys all holding up uh, during this insane um, time in our lives? I've been taking on plants and trying to keep them alive a little more. <laughs> How about you, Brack? Um, I've been good, just trying to fill my time. Uh, starting to try to get in star girl shape. So I actually just got back yesterday. I did a nine mile hike. I was very proud of myself. Wow. Ooh, that's impressive. Oh. That is super. Yeah. That's very impressive, Brack. Like that's awesome. Wow. I Amazing. think the uh, the one of the things this uh, this time is uh, just pertaining to like activities and things like that, it does give you more time to explore like, oh, the things around you, around your immediate area to like go hiking and go, mm -hmm. that's really all you can do. You go hiking and um, <laughs> walk around, you know, look at stuff. But I've become very, very, very familiar with everything outside my windows. I've definitely been discovering lots of cool new hiking trails around LA that I never knew existed. Who would have thought that there's like waterfalls here when we're in like always in a drought? I had no idea. So it's been great. I was baking a lot when I first started this quarantine, but um, mm. it kind of, you know, it catches up to you. So I started working out for <laughs> the trainer and we've been going hard, Angelica and I. So uh, yeah, yes. it's been fun. Really strong, Jeff. Like, really strong. Great. You're going to need it for season two. We got a lot of bad guys and a lot of bad things happening. <laughs> you guys are going to have to stop. So I can't wait for you guys to dig into this stuff. Everybody's got a really good journey ahead of them in uh, Stargirl season two. The writer's room, it's virtually like this. It's it's a wonderful group of writers, as you guys already know. Um, and we're, we're breaking episode. I mean, we've already kind of broke the season. Kind of broke the season a long time ago, but broke the season even deeper um and we're deep into episode four uh, i'm finishing the script on one is breaking the season the same thing as breaking the internet or what does that what does breaking, that mean breaking the season means um we get on the zoom call um like we are now and we usually want to room with a big it. board yeah and we attack it we attack the story we uh we talk about the characters for hours on end we we have these virtual like whiteboards up now where like our writer's assistant, um, who's amazing, Charlotte, like we'll move things around and we'll we'll start to plot scene by scene how it goes. But it's like it's it's learning a whole new skill set working on a show in a virtual writer's room. It's it's fun. It's it's not as fun as being in person because I just like being around people more. Mm -hmm. But um, but it's been great and I, I'm excited. We're gonna blink and uh, and you guys will be on stage. So sick. <laughs> You know, I'm very grateful for everybody who watched the first season, by the way, out there. Thank you for all the support. And uh, we really, everyone here made it with so, so much passion and love and care. We really want to deliver something special. And uh, and we're going to keep doing that, we hope. Speaking of training, I really do miss um, taking out all the bad guys with you guys. Sorry, Meg. No offense. <laughs> love you. Love you. <laughs> Aw, what do we have here? They do not look like hackers. My apologies for the mistake. They're called Sportsmaster and Tigress. Icicles attack dogs. So what do we do now? Okay. Let's lead them outside. We'll keep them together so we can stay together. I can do this myself. Our man! Game time. Kid. I'll the satellite access codes in less than five minutes. Copy that. I got Jason Voorhees. I got Tiger Lady. Wait! We need to stick together! 
those night shoots were, were like so challenging. I feel like for all of us, like keeping our energy up and it, for me, it felt like summer camp. It was like the first time all of us were really together in that way. You know, I knew the last guy who wore that outfit. He was a big dumb idiot too. That scene was the scene that never wanted to be shot. When we were filming, Real. the weather just didn't cooperate. We were filming at night and it just kept raining. We kept having to push it. I think they actually ended up starting to film scenes from the next episode that were inside just because the world was against us. Not only were Tigers and Sports Maps are against us, but the world. I remember being like, wow, we actually have the best stunts team in the entire world. <laughs> The first time really for me getting to watch our stunt crew work i remember like staying like hours after i was wrapped just to watch like awesome fights scenes so um yeah we just have the best stunt crew the stunt team ever like everyone's just so awesome come here kitty cat uh, chuck what do i do there's a fire extinguisher cut it I was just excited about the season after that even more so because I just couldn't believe like we had the acting part down and then we had like actual superheroes doing these larger than life stunts. It was amazing. All the stunt people were so patient with everyone, which I really appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Walter Garcia, our stunt coordinator, is just unbelievable. Really unbelievable. Yes. I loved being with you guys. That was like the first time for me for sure in my suit. And I just remember being like, it's 4 a.m., but this is the best day ever. Like, just <laughs> so excited. I can do it. One of my favorite things about that experience was seeing how close you are as a cast and how supportive you are of one another. It's been, it's been really fun to watch. Um, the relationships both form in the stories and off camera. And that was the night where I saw you guys huddle up and I'm like, oh my God, they're, they are the JSA. It was so cool. It was a beautiful moment. I remember seeing that photo. So I don't know if I like on the day said anything to anyone cause I just was so embarrassed. But one of the nights that we were, that we were shooting, um, I had to hold up this like big green mat um, which was like the car that I was gonna like throw it uh, at Sportsmaster. Mm, hey, Gretzky! And I had just done like the hardest workout of my entire life before coming to set. And I like couldn't hold this thing up because my legs are like so fried. Good for you, kid. But that thing's heavy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but it worked. It was like, oh, getting tired because the hour was running up. It worked perfectly for you. Thank God, because if the hour had just started, they'd have been like, this is the wrong hour, man, because he's not <laughs> strong. But also, like, lifting a car should be still hard. But I thought, whatever you did, I was like, oh, cool, he's straining. It worked, looked great. great. I thought it was very, in like, that was your intent. So. I'm so glad. Seeing it all come <laughs> together, like, all the challenges that that scene brought, like, I am so proud of it. I just think it's so cool to see the team together for the first time. Well, clearly there was some major team improvement for the JSA because in episode 113, we kicked some butt and clearly our man got a little stronger. No more ice mask, Jordan. I've got nothing to hide anymore, Courtney. <laughs> Anyone else have deja vu? I do. Wasn't that a fun night? Time to kill the JSA again. Well, I remember at the Taylor Raid when it, that was even said that I killed my dad. I was like, what? And everyone flipped out. And I remember the moment where, I don't know, you can see my hand coming out. And I was like, yes, 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 she's coming out, she's coming out. And um, killing my dad was kind of sad because I love Nelson, but also very liberating. <laughs> <laughs> C 
seeing it finally when it aired, I was like, because I obviously didn't get to watch, you know, you film that. So when I finally saw like just the, ugh, mm -hmm. I was just literally shocked. And also the way he died, it was just like, wow, she so is the most evil villain that has ever been. And you were just like gutting him and then go, what did you say? Shouldn't have locked me up. Daddy. I, you're, like, Shiv's hey. lines are the most iconic from the whole season. Like, mm -hmm. they're just so fun. They I just love them. Shiv just, like, has no remorse at all. And no so, remorse. it was but so she good. Saved shiny she, was so good. she, like, saved Shining Knight. She's I'm a that's true. She's a hero in a way. This is true. This is true. And also, by that time, like, you're kind of happy for Shiv because, like, her, her father was awful. Like, mm -hmm. it's such a, she's such a mean character, but then you understand that her whole life, she's been like, like experimented on. You're like, good, I'm glad he's gone. And is he really gone? Cause lizards heal. Like, I don't know. <laughs> you do see the difference between the team. Like they, they work as a team. I love the moment when Courtney goes in and gives an assist to our man in Wildcat. And I love that you guys are pacing it together. I love how emotional it is. Beth is up in the tower, like helping you guys out in there. It felt like if the, the team really came together and obviously they kicked ass together. Um, and Cindy lived to, to fight another day, which I Don't. The Solomon Grunny fight, one of the things that I think I'm really excited about for season two, and I know, Cam, you and I have talked about it too, uh, and I don't want to spoil anything, but that we have a lot more story with Solomon Grundy coming up like you might have told him to leave but that doesn't mean he's going to yeah yeah that I think that that was like such an incredible arc for Rick and I'm so grateful that I got to ride that the whole season because for him to finally get to this thing that embodies all of his loss and all of his rage and then to choose to be better, it felt like a moment that, you know, that Bowerman Sr. would have been proud of. Go on, get out of here! And then, Yvette, Wildcat, like, does the opposite, and you're just like, no! Like, the wholesomeness goes away, you know? It's crazy. I also think you can see that you can see it in the characters in that uh, scene afterwards at the football field where Rick, I love when Breck, when you said, are you okay? And you see Rick Cam just says, yeah, with a smile. And you can tell he, he, for the moment he is for this moment he is. And then you have Yolanda and Beth, Beth obviously concerned about Dr. Midnight Chuck, which is a big story for season two, which is going to be fun. Um, but uh, and then Yolanda kind of staring off and you can tell she's haunted by by what's occurred today and by what's happened over the last, you know, however, however many weeks they've been doing this months. And um, and that's a big story of her dealing with what she did, what happened with Henry and what she did with Brainwave is a big part of season two. Like It's not something we're just going to kind of gloss over and be like, oh, that happened. It's it's actually her entire story into season two. Clearly, we have epic fights, but I love the funny moments, too. Like, um, when Beth and Pat go to Shiv's house to, to snoop around, those scenes cracked me up. Can I help you? I'm a classmate of Cindy's. She invited me over to teach me some cheerleading moves. <laughs> I really hope to join the squad. Angelica, when you did your, like, kick, in the air. Oh my, oh my gosh. <laughs> so it's like this is my favorite moment in like Luke's reaction, just like, uh. I think that was the one that made me laugh the most out of all the reads. What is that you're wearing? Oh, these? Oh, my vision is bad. <laughs> like beyond LASIK bad. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I wear these. She's actually as blind as a bat. I shouldn't be laughing, <laughs> but yeah, she can't see a thing. <laughs> That scene was so much fun to film. I just remember like make, like just like Jeff gave us like freedom that we got to like, just like ad lib a little bit and like just add some stuff in. I was like, yeah, daddy-o. 
Can I use your bathroom? <laughs> this water just went right through me. <laughs> you know what? She's okay. I think you can wait till we. I won't make, make it, Daddy O. Won't make it. Nope. Um, these are a uh, brand new pants, so you know, girls. <sighs> right this way. And I remember after I, I think I asked you, Jeff. I'm like. Should I stop doing all that? And you're like, no, great. It's funny. We're going to keep it in. It's hilarious. And I was like, okay. And Luke was just like, just up, down. He was just like so down. And was just like, we we're just bouncing off of each other. And it was so fun. You guys are such talented actors. You embody the characters so well. And you start to own the characters. Like you're going to be the stewards of these characters. So always fun to hear stuff that just happens in the moment. And you got, I mean, you guys know Luke's like, Luke and Trey do it all day long. You know, every. Every scene they have on page starts that long, and then there's, you know, two pages of it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> goodbye, in and out Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, indoor plumbing. That's Nebraska. It's not Siberia, Mike. I looked this place up on Google Earth. Blue Valley doesn't have Jack. It's got fresh air. It's got friendly people. It's got schools without metal detectors. The thing is, I need your help with this move, okay? I need you to be positive. Positive? I, I am positive. Great. I'm positive this place will blow us. I love it. I love it because it's all, it all comes from a place of understanding the characters and, and, and talent, you know, with it. So it's, I love the process. I love that this is a, it's a, it's a collaboration and that's what makes it so fun. One of the most significant moments for, for me in the, in the first season was sitting in the van with you, Jeff. And I was upset because I, had done apparently what you were actually going to go with for the Hourman power up in episode five. And then I changed it completely in episode six. I was like, Hey, I changed it. You're like, why'd you do that? And I was nervous about it. And I just remember you being like, no one knows we're figuring this out together. And I trust you. And as long as you trust me, this is going to be so much fun. And I relaxed so much after that because I felt like I was there as an equal and that I could take risks. And I just, I, along with Yvette, like completely appreciate that about you. Yeah, we're a team, all of us. Lighter, actors, crew. Um, so I know we kind of touched on season two just a little bit, but I have to ask Jeff, what's going on with Eclipso? Oh my gosh, we're, uh, I'm so excited for Eclipso. Eclipso is like, he's so terrifying. Um, I think... I think uh, I love, I've always loved the character and it's a character that you, know, you guys probably did a little bit of research on maybe when you heard him or checked him out. But um, he's, a, he's a very different, uh, very different antagonist or villain than the ISA. just starting to cast him so we're looking for that and I've got these wonderful designs from LJ Shannon on you know what he's gonna look like um, but it's such a different darker scarier threat because the threat is Cindy's one thing and she's got the black diamond and we're gonna obviously explore that but the thing inside it this entity that's trapped this ancient being that feeds off humanity's own sins and and grief and fear and darkness. <laughs> wow. Trapped in this this black diamond and has been there for a long, long time and is aching to uh, to to do what he does and and feed off the darkness within humanity. It's going to take you know a lot to confront it, and it's going to take the the JSA and every one of our wonderful characters to a place that that's going to be you know tough for them to explore. So uh, I'm excited about it. But Eclipso is one of my very favorite villains from the comic books. And in the comics, you know, he, he's, done a, he's, had, a, he's had a history with uh, Wildcat and Dr. Midnight and, um, and the JSA too, but it's going to be, we'll see. It's history. definitely not a good history. It's a very, 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 very scary history yeah. that I would not <laughs> like to revisit. Yeah, yeah, Meg, so Meg, awesome job letting him out. That was great. Oh, you're welcome. Thank I'm you glad. so much yeah. for that. Yeah. Thanks, Meg. <laughs> Love that Thank so you. much. But Jeff, you, we see a lot of Eclipso. Can you tell us more about the shade? We got to see a little bit.
Oh, Jordan. I told you it was folly. We're going to see a lot of the shade. He's also another big character, a main character that's going to be coming into season two. And um, he's a pretty famous and popular character from James Robinson's run on Starman. And James Robinson, who's one of my very closest friends, one of the best writers I've ever known in my life and, and, a, and a big part of the show. Um, he's, uh, he's a producer and writer on the show. And, and I, I just, it's, he makes it so fun because we've known each other since I was like 19 and, he loves these characters as much as I do. And his take on the shade is so wonderful. He took this really obscure character from the forties called the shade who has the ability to kind of tap into darkness and shadows um, and, and updated him, gave him a massive history of really interesting to explore. He's, a, he's an immortal that's been around for hundreds of years. He was a member of the ISA and we saw him in that mural, right? We saw his glasses kind of in, behind Sportsmaster and Tigris. I've stared at it a lot. And um, and he was the only member of the ISA that wasn't present in Blue Valley. And today, we saw him when his shadow hand grabbed Doctor Midnight in the opening of the pilot. Um, but oh he, wow! That that was the shade. Um, that's his power. He's he's as Pat will tell Courtney in some point. He's the most powerful of them all, um, and he's very threatening because no one knows exactly what he wants. But we'll we'll be playing a lot with the shade. So Eclipso and Shade. Do they work um, I together? I can't spoil anything like that, Ken. <laughs> I tried. Off the uh, yeah, I mean, I could get I could get too far into it. No, it's hard because right, I don't want to spoil too much or tease too much. We're too far away from the second season. It's really weird to have that first season come out during this time. And it felt like it took forever for our show to come out. And then when it came out, it was like, <laughs> it was just like, mm -hmm. yep. yeah. Yeah. Out. But, um, but yeah, Eclipse and the Shade are two of the major characters. There's a few other new characters coming in, but those we're keeping a little bit secret. Ooh. Now we're going to answer some of your burning questions. <laughs> uh, will Stargirl eventually make use or find people to fit the other artifacts she collected from the Hall of the JSA? Well, I mean, I can start with this one. This is a good, good question. Yeah. Uh, and something we, that's been obviously like on the, you know, there's a reason that um, that Courtney stole what she stole, and she stole the Green Lan the, the Green Lantern, Alan Scott's Green Lantern, and one of my favorite objects in all of DC lore, the pink pen, um, the giggling pink pen. <laughs> so, bit of a trick answer, if that's if there's such a thing, but <laughs> yes and no. Um, I don't know how in control Courtney's going to be in all this stuff, so we'll see. But yes, we'll see that stuff. I hope she like finds a home for those artifacts just because I had so much fun like recruiting the team. Like those are some of my favorite episodes that we filmed. If we are going to do this, we need to protect our identities. Does this mean I get a costume? I'd really like a costume. And like you said, like during episode six, when we had that first fight scene together and we were all just so excited to have the team together, I do love the team energy that's like on set when we're all together. So just like adding more people, I, I hope so. I think that's so fun. Stargirl needs her team and her <laughs> team needs her. And that's that's always going to be paramount. Uh, to me, the JSA is always, you know, uh, is always going to be this group. and uh, um, And it doesn't work without the group. Let's go do some recruiting. So, will Grundy ever turn good or become an anti-hero? I think that there is so much possibility for Grundy and for an amazing storyline for Grundy because he's free now. And we saw in episode 13 that he is free thinking and has a conscience. So in a way, you're rooting against him and for him. He's like a big puppy that just seems like he has a good heart, but it's just... Yeah. Barry. Yeah, I don't, know. I don't know if I call him a puppy. He's like, okay. a, but he is like a, he's like we a have those puppy dog eyes. And the last episode was really cute. Yeah, to go for the dog analogy or whatever, but that would work. He's kind of a dog that is has been trained to attack. Grundy. <laughs> It can be 
biggest, most gruesome dog, and it is still a puppy. <laughs> I, that's exactly what I'm saying. But I'm saying when you first look at him, he looks like an attack dog. And that's really what he is. And is there a puppy inside him? Can I help you? I'm looking for Pat Dugan. Who are you? I'm an old friend. Name's Sylvester Pemberton. So what's the return of Sylvester Pemberton going to mean for the gang in season two? That is something I do not want to spoil, but um, clearly it was a big ending and we'll be dealing with that immediately. Joel McHale was so great to work with uh, as briefly as it was, but, um, but now he's back and what that means and how and why, uh, you'll start to get an inkling of that in the very first episode of season two. On set, like, what were you guys' favorite funniest moments? Um, one of my favorite funniest moments, I think, was episode one, I believe, where Jake or Henry, like, throws up the, the food tray. Oh, hey, new girl. She got a new phone. Hey! Give that back! Nice! But I think also it was just, like, my first day being on set when we got to do that scene and just being so giggly and giddy to be there. So every little thing was just like hilarious and fun. My favorite moments was bowling balling you guys through the, um, <laughs> yeah. the hallway. We kept hitting our shoulder, like my same shoulder, maybe like four times. And then like it, I would like hit Cameron really hard. And I had to turn around and be like, watch where you're going. Watch where you're going. Every single time I was just like laughing. <laughs> well guys, this has been so much fun. We can check off Comic-Con off our bucket list. So cool, this was so fun. I'm so excited to get back and film season two with all of you. Um, thank you everyone who sent in questions and watched and thank you everyone who supported us through season one. Woo. I'm really excited for y'all to see season two. <laughs> Love you guys. Love you too. Great to see you Thank you guys. So good to see you Bye, all. Bye guys.